This app allows us to change the angle and the hypotenuse and observe what the effect is on the sine, cosine, and tangent. Now, of course, the cosecant, secant, and cotangents are just reciprocals of these three. So if we know what these are, then we can find what the others are very easily. <coughs> uh, notice some other things that are kept track of here. This terminal point P on this uh, terminal side is also given as we do the calculations. So it's not surprising that that when the radius is equal to 1, when this hypotenuse is equal to 1, then the opposite side divided by the hypotenuse is going to be what the tangent is, is going to be what the sine is. And uh, notice that the y value of this point is really the length of that red line. <clears throat> the x value of point P is the length of this blue line at any particular time. Now in the case that we've got a unit circle, then it makes it really easy. Notice something interesting that happens as I change this. Notice these points and the values of the sine and the cosine. As I change the angle, uh, whatever the y value is here is whatever the cosine is over here. Whatever the Whatever the x value is here, that's what the cosine is. Whatever the y value is here, that's what the sine is. That happens if the radius, if the hypotenuse, is equal to 1. Okay, and you think about that and, and make sure you understand why that's the case. Okay, now, if we had, if we change the hypotenuse, notice what changes here. The terminal side, the the point on the terminal side changes, but the sine, cosine, and tangent all stay the same. Here I am changing the hypotenuse. See, sine, cosine, and tangent don't change, but that point P is changing. That's because the ratio of this side to the hypotenuse is what the sine is. And whether I'm looking at this larger triangle or the similar smaller triangle when that P is actually right at 1 or even smaller than that, then, then those ratios always stay the same for a, for, a given, for a given angle. Okay. Now let's observe something else. If we're in the first quadrant, this red value, the y value of this point is positive and of course the hypotenuse is positive so the sine is positive here the cosine is positive because the the x value of this point is positive the length of that blue line it's going in a positive direction so it's positive and the tangent is the sine over the cosine so of course all three of those are positive now look what happens if i slide over into the second quadrant <clears throat> in the second quadrant, the sine is still going to be positive because the y value of point P is positive. That's, that's giving the positive length of this red, red side, of that opposite side, divided by the hypotenuse is going to be positive. But now the cosine is negative because this adjacent side is going in the negative direction. Okay, The x value of point P is negative divided by the hypotenuse is going to be a negative amount and of course the, then the tangent is going to be negative because it is the sine divided by the cosine. If we slide down into uh, the third quadrant somewhere now both of these values are negative so <clears throat> the y value of point p is negative divided by the length of that hypotenuse is going to be a negative amount the sine is negative the cosine is also negative because the x value of point p is negative divided by the hypotenuse 
And of course, the tangent is positive because it's the sine divided by the cosine. Negative divided by negative is positive. If we slide over into the fourth quadrant, then you can see this y value of this point is negative, so the sine is negative. The y value of uh, the x value of point P, the length of that blue line, is going in a positive direction. So uh, the cosine is is positive, and so of course the tangent is going to be uh, negative. Now let's just look at some special angles while we're right here, just real quickly. If we set things at at 30 degrees, then you should have these trig ratios memorized, especially the sine and the cosine. For 30 degrees, this is. Um, if we slide this back so that it's right there, then, okay, you, you should, um, you should know a number of special angles. You should know what things are like when you're at zero degrees, while you're at 30, de 30 degrees, let me see if I can't set it there, 30 at 45 degrees, at 60 degrees, and at 90 degrees. Okay, you should know those special angles and their corresponding part, their, their corresponding angles in each of the other quadrants. Okay, we'll do that in another video actually. Okay, great.